Ever wondered why a huge metal machine can soar in the sky while we can't jump more than a few feet off the ground? It's a question that has puzzled humans for centuries, leading us on a quest to understand the intriguing world of flight. You see, flight is more than just a method of transportation. It's a scientific marvel that has transformed our world. From the buzzing of a bee to the roaring engines of an airplane, flight is everywhere. It allows us to explore the depths of the ocean, reach the peaks of the highest mountains and even journey to the stars. While we're on the subject, let's briefly touch on the four fundamental forces that make flight possible. Lift, weight, thrust, and drag. Now don't worry, we're not about to dive into a physics lecture, but these forces are the invisible threads that weave the tapestry of flight. Lift is what propels a bird or plane upward, while weight pulls it back down to earth. Thrust propels it forward and drag tries to slow it down. It's a delicate dance, a balance of forces that allows flight to occur. Now imagine if humans tried to fly by jumping off the ground. You're picturing it, aren't you? There we are, flapping our arms like wings, trying to outdo gravity. It's a hilarious image, but it also highlights just how complex flight really is. It's not about jumping high or flapping hard, but about understanding and utilizing the properties of air and the interplay of these four forces. So, whether you've gazed at a bird soaring in the sky and wondered how it stays aloft, or sat on a plane and marveled at how something so heavy can fly, you're in the right place. We're about to unravel the secrets of the sky, the science behind flight, and the mechanisms that keep us airborne. Well, stick around, and you'll soon be able to explain this mystery to your friends. It's not magic folks, it's all about the four forces of flight. So let's dive right in. Imagine you're holding a paper airplane. You've just given it a mighty throw and it's soaring through the air. There are four forces at work here, guiding that paper plane on its journey. These same forces are at play in real airplanes, birds, and even insects. We just heard about them a few seconds ago, but they are lift, weight, thrust, and drag. First up, we have lift. Lift is the force that pushes an airplane upwards against the pull of gravity. It's kind of like an invisible hand that reaches up from the ground and gives the airplane a boost. Lift is created when air flows over and under the wings of an aircraft. The air moves faster over the top of the wing and slower underneath, creating a pressure difference. This difference is what gives the aircraft its lift. Picture it like this. Imagine you're at a crowded concert and you're trying to reach the front. The crowd is packed tighter at the front, that's the air under the wing, and it's a bit looser at the back, the air over the wing. You'll naturally move towards the back where there's less pressure. That's lift. Next, we have weight. Weight is the force of gravity pulling the airplane downwards. It's the Earth saying, hey, stay here with me. But the airplane wants to fly, and so it fights against this pull. Weight is always there, whether the plane is on the ground or in the air. The heavier the plane, the stronger the weight force and the more lift is needed to keep it in the air. Then, there's thrust. Thrust is the force that propels the airplane forward. It's like the push you give your friend on a swing to make them go higher. In an airplane, the engines provide the thrust, pushing the airplane through the air. The stronger the thrust, the faster the plane can fly. Last but not least, there's drag. Drag is the air's way of saying, slow down, buddy. It's a force that resists the airplane's movement. Think of it like trying to walk through a pool of honey. The honey slows you down, right? That's drag. There are two kinds of drag. Parasite drag, which includes form drag and skin friction, and induced drag, which is related to the creation of lift. Now these four forces don't work independently. They're a team, constantly interacting with each other. When an airplane is in steady level flight, these forces are balanced. Lift equals weight, and thrust equals drag. But if any of these forces change, the others must adjust to keep the plane in the air. For example, if the airplane wants to climb, the pilot increases the thrust. This creates more lift than weight, and the airplane rises. On the other hand, if the pilot wants to descend, they reduce the thrust. This makes the weight greater than the lift, and the airplane descends. And it's not just airplanes, birds and insects also use these forces to fly. A bird flapping its wings is creating lift and thrust, while its body weight and the air resistance create weight and drag. So the next time you see a plane soaring in the sky or a bird flapping its wings, remember, it's not magic. It's the incredible interplay of lift, weight, thrust, and drag. So now you know the four forces that keep that airplane from dropping out of the sky, Scene script. Ever thought of how pilots control these forces to steer the plane? Let's find out. Imagine you're on a seesaw. You're trying to balance it perfectly with your friend on the other end, but you're a bit heavier. To balance it out, you scoot closer to the center, 
altering your weight distribution. In a similar way, pilots and birds alike manipulate the forces of flight to maintain balance and control their movement. Let's start with the flying machines. When a plane wants to go up, it needs more lift than weight. So the pilot will increase the angle of the wings, effectively increasing the lift. This is much like leaning back on your seesaw to lift your feet off the ground. But to descend, the pilot will do the opposite, reducing the angle of the wings, therefore reducing lift and allowing the weight to take over. Now what about steering left or right? Well, the pilot can alter the balance of lift between the wings. By increasing the lift on one wing and decreasing it on the other, the plane will bank and turn. It's like if you and your seesaw partner decided to shift your weights to one side, the seesaw would tip over, right? Same concept. But planes aren't the only ones mastering the art of balance in the sky. Birds, bats, and even insects have their methods too. Let's take the albatross for example. This bird is a master at using the wind and waves to glide for long distances without flapping its wings. By subtly altering the angle of their wings in response to changing wind conditions, they can maintain balance and control their flight path. It's like they're surfing the air. Or consider the dragonfly. These insects are famous for their acrobatic flight. They can hover, fly backwards and even flip upside down. How do they do it? By rapidly adjusting the angle and speed of their four wings, they can control lift, weight, thrust and drag, all at the same time. In essence, they're like the ultimate gymnasts of the insect world. So whether it's a sleek airplane, a graceful albatross or a nimble dragonfly, all flying entities use a combination of balanced and unbalanced forces to control their flight. They adjust the four forces, lift, weight, thrust and drag, to their advantage, altering their flight path, speed and direction as needed. It's a delicate dance in the sky, a fascinating interplay of physics and nature. In conclusion, flight isn't just about defying gravity. It's about maintaining a delicate balance between multiple forces. And it's not just about getting from point A to point B. It's a complex ballet of physics, performed by both man-made machines and nature's creatures. Next time you're on a plane, remember the pilot is playing a balancing act with these four forces. Now, what if we want to change the course or speed of a plane? How do we manipulate these forces? Let's dive right in. To change the course or speed of a plane, we have to alter the balance of these four forces. It's like tweaking the ingredients in a recipe to get a different flavor. Each force has its own set of controls, and understanding how to adjust them is the key to mastering flight. Lift can be adjusted by changing the angle of the wings, or, angle of attack. Increasing the angle of attack can increase lift, but only up to a point. After that, it can cause a stall, which is like a hiccup in the sky. Not something you want while cruising at 30,000 feet. So, pilots must be careful not to push the envelope too far. Next, we have weight. Now, we can't magically make the plane lighter mid-flight, unless we're throwing out luggage, which I'm pretty sure would be frowned upon. But we can control how weight is distributed. Shifting cargo or passengers can change the plane's center of gravity, affecting its stability and maneuverability. Then, we have thrust. This is where the plane's engines come into play. By increasing power we can increase thrust, propelling the plane forward. But remember, with great power comes great fuel consumption. So pilots need to balance the need for speed with the need to keep enough fuel for the journey. Lastly, we have drag. We can reduce drag by streamlining the aircraft. Think of it as giving the plane a slick aerodynamic haircut. Also, retracting the landing gear and flaps reduces drag. It's like tucking in your shirt and tie when you're running late for work. It makes you more streamlined and less likely to trip. But here's where it gets interesting. These forces don't work in isolation. They're like members of a band, each playing their part to create the symphony of flight. Change one, and it affects the others. Increase thrust, and you might need more lift to counter the added weight of fuel. Reduce drag, and you might need less thrust. It's a constant balancing act. So, when you're on a plane and you feel it tilt to one side or the engines roar a bit louder, that's the pilot adjusting these forces, guiding the aircraft through the sky. It's like steering a car, but in three dimensions and with a few more variables to consider. So, the next time your flight takes a sudden turn, you'll know exactly what's happening. It's not just the whims of the wind or the pilot's love for roller coasters. It's a carefully calculated adjustment of the forces of flight, designed to keep you safe and on course. So sit back, enjoy the ride, and marvel at the wonder of flight. It's not just science, it's an art. Now, let's look at the natural world. How do birds and insects manage to fly? The art of flying, as showcased by birds and insects, is an intricate dance of physics and biology, refined through millions of years of evolution. 
When we delve into the world of these flying marvels, we're met with a fascinating blend of characteristics and adaptations that make flight possible. Take birds for instance, their bodies are designed for aerial efficiency, they have lightweight bones, a streamlined shape and mighty muscles connected to their wings, which provide the thrust and lift needed to take to the skies. Their feathers too, play a crucial role, forming an airfoil shape that creates lift when air flows over them. And let's not forget the tail feathers, acting like a rudder of a ship, guiding and controlling their direction. Insects on the other hand, use a different approach. They have two sets of wings that can beat at an incredibly fast rate. This not only provides lift but also allows them to hover, dart and change direction with a precision that would make any fighter pilot green with envy. Some insects, like the dragonfly, can even move each wing independently, offering unparalleled maneuverability. But it's not just about the physical attributes. The art of flying also involves a keen sense of balance and an understanding of air currents. Birds, for instance, can sense changes in air pressure with their inner ears, allowing them to adjust their flight accordingly. Similarly, many insects can detect changes in wind direction and speed using their antennae, enabling them to navigate efficiently. In the grand scheme of things, these creatures demonstrate a mastery of the four forces of flight, lift, weight, thrust, and drag, that we humans can only aspire to replicate. Their flight is not just a means of movement, but a complex ballet that involves precision, balance, and control. Amazing, isn't it? How nature has perfected the art of flight over millions of years. Well, we've covered a lot of ground, or should I say sky? We've dived into the fascinating world of flight, and I hope your minds are soaring as high as the topics we've discussed. We've explored the four forces that make flight possible, lift, weight, thrust, and drag. These are the unseen heroes that keep birds, planes, and even those pesky mosquitoes in the air. We've also touched on the delicate balance of flight, how these forces, like a team of skilled acrobats, work together and can be adjusted to control the flight. Remember how we talked about altering these forces? Just like tweaking the ingredients in a recipe, it can drastically change the outcome. And let's not forget our feathered and winged friends who've mastered the art of flying. Their adaptations are a testament to nature's genius. Thanks for flying with us today. Remember the sky is not the limit, it's just the beginning.